Surfers Toastmasters Public Speaking Club. We are a part of an international organization called Toastmasters with, over, with almost 16,000 clubs all over the world in 143 countries and with over 300,000 members. Uh, my name is Diana and I am the president of this club and I would like to ask you how many of you here are for the first time? Please raise your hand. Wow, that's amazing. Please guys, come to the stage then. Come on, we'll we welcome you all. Just one or two sentences for why you think here would be enough. Okay, let's start with that side. My name is Nick, and I'm here to improve my English uh, <laughs> skills. Just to watch something new. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm Jan Gerpelin by name, and uh, I'm here today because I uh, want to. Um, uh, to speak English, I want to listen English and uh, to make friends. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dasha, and I'm here because I'm really interested in what you're talking about and just to see what is happening here. Oh, curiosity, interesting. Uh, my name is Olga. I'm here to feel myself more confident speaking English uh, in the public. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, hello, my name is Olga, I work for Central Bank of Russian Federation and the interaction with foreign counterparties is uh, part of our work. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to practice my English and also because my friend, my good friend invited me, uh, Irina Sovarova. Oh, nice, thank you, Ira. Hello, my name is Yuri. I heard a lot about your club, so I came here just to see what it's like. Mm -hmm. Good. Hi everyone, I'm Tim. Um, so, um, actually, I have no idea what's going on here. But anyway, I thought it would be fascinating if I visited this meeting and took part in your conversation and this stuff. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is George. I'm here to improve or obtain some public speaking abilities. Okay, it's That's a good place for that. I guess. I'm Anna, I'm here to improve my English skills. Okay. Hi, I'm Maria, and I'm just curious about your organization. I would like to improve my public speaking skills. Uh -huh, perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Emanuele, and uh, well, I'm here because a friend uh, proposed me to come, and uh, I was interested in I'm interested in uh, sharing opinions and talking English. Uh -huh. Which friend do I know him? Mm, she went. She came here just once. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, still a good friend. I'm Marix, and I won't speak and read in English. <laughs> well, thank you all. Please give them a big round of applause. You are very great. And what you will see today will be, first of all, you will see some prepared speeches. So people have prepared the projects. They will come on stage, they will present them, and they will get evaluated. And then the second part, this is the part where I want you all on stage again, will be called table topic session. This is like improvisational session. You get a question and you answer it without preparation, without anything. It's super good for you if you want to improve your skills. Now also don't forget, this is Kate, our VPN. Please put your details over there in the break maybe or when she will be passing you that paper so we can contact you and tell you more information about us. Thank you so much. You can now take your seats. Very quickly about our rules, please don't forget to put your phone on silent mode because there is nothing worse than disturbing a speaker when he is on the stage. And now, I would like to hand this stage to our wonderful Toastmaster of the evening, Sergei Polmashov. 
Thank you very much, Diana. Uh, welcome, dear guests, dear Toastmasters, to, to the 100 and something eighth meeting of the of this wonderful club. So, uh, uh, last meeting we've uh, deliberated upon uh, our summer memories, but today the, the theme is different. So I was wondering what what to, what to talk about, and I remembered myself uh, about five years ago when I first started com uh, coming to some um, English speaking club, and to my experience, I just collected a statistics, my personal statistics, very subjective one. Everything which we will be talking about will be very subject subjective. So to my statistics, about 60% of people who, who I who I met came to Moscow from some from elsewhere, from other cities of Russia and maybe from some other countries as well. And maybe 40% uh, were born here, uh, maybe in first generation. So and lately Moscow has celebrated its 871st. Uh, anniversary, and I thought to myself, why, uh, how people who came here should should you know feel should leave here, and what they think about Moscow. So I asked, at least I tried to, uh, two questions of all the participants: why you like Moscow and why you don't. So, and we will learn everything about what they told me. But first, some curious some curious statistics, which was uh, collected with the help of Artur Tuzbekov. So he launched. Um, a survey on uh, this club's um, social media and uh, we got these results so people on Facebook um, so we, we've got six people on Facebook who uh, and four of them answered they, they, that they like Moscow so others have some different opinion we don't know <laughs> what but then uh, we've got two opinions on VK and one person told that uh, he or she likes Moscow, and the other, we don't know, but maybe not, maybe not really. And on, on Instagram, we've got the majority of votes, so uh, it was 12 people, 8 of them told that they like Moscow. So, um, to draw the bottom line, we've got 20 people ans answered, and 13 told that Moscow is their favorite city, so it's 65%, not bad, not bad, so let's get... Um, let's uh, have a round of applause. Yes. Thank you. So today on the program, three prepared speeches from our outstanding speakers. Then after the break, hopefully we'll have time for, for the break. The table talk section, as Diana told me, it's a great opportunity for newcomers. So these newcomers, get ready to get into your speech. Two minutes, not more. And lastly, the evaluation session by Alexei Lobzov. Looking forward to it. So, uh, uh, is Evgeny Lauren here? No? No, Evgeny isn't here. So, maybe he, set the note, he will set the note for the meeting later, if he comes, hopefully. And um, first person who I'd like to come uh, invite here on stage is, at the time, a very important person here. He is the ruler of the time here. Mm -hmm. So, please meet Stefan Mitelio. Fine. Yeah, so first of all, two questions. So why you like Moscow and why you don't? Yeah, I like Moscow because uh, there are so many interesting things and there are um, very big history of the city. And I don't like Moscow about uh, um, because of uh, crowd of people in traffic jam and uh, in uh, big cars in the metro. It's not convenient to go somewhere. Okay. So... I want to introduce myself. My name is Stepan, and I will be here today as a timer. Uh, let me explain my roles and uh, the rules. Uh, during the meeting, I will show speakers the color signs. Uh, what do they mean? The green sign means that the speaker has reached the minimum time limit. And yellow color I mean that informs the speaker of reaching a particular point of his speech and the red point uh, the speaker has uh, reached the maximum limit and very important things that if the speaker contains speak I will uh, I will keep holding this um, this color until he's young and 
if uh, in the final part I, of, of the even, event, I will comment and about results of timing. So. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you were great. Uh, really good for, for your first time. So the next person is Krumarian, very important person as well. He will, I think he will explain all, everything he will do here. So, welcome Mark Wilson. Hello Mark, very nice to see you. So, uh, two questions and two, two, two answers. Do you know the questions, please? Which, why you like Moscow, why you don't? The thing I like about Moscow most would be the public transport system is quite effective. The best in the world I've ever seen. The thing I don't like about Moscow would be the winter, which is, you know, throughout Russia generally that's a, that's a problem. So yeah. But my job as a grammarian is to keep track of all the mistakes you're making, or not all of them, but the major ones. Um, if you make some small ones, maybe I'll, I'll pass it over, but the important ones will be spoken about. Uh, also, to cor correct pronunciation, if this is a problem, I'll, I'll let you know and explain how to say it correctly. And the word of the day, should I write it on the end, is uh, compelling. I don't know if you've heard of this before. Compelling. This means really interesting, something that maybe you respect or admire, something that makes you want to learn more about it. Thank you. Could you give a couple of examples? Uh, this subject is really compelling. Um, the, uh, the idea that you've given us is something we want to pursue because it's very compelling. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank and the last uh, person with the role, but not the least, Alina Grubnova is an accountant. So welcome, Alina. <laughs> Alina, so two questions. Why you like Moscow and why you don't? Uh, firstly, I like Moscow because it's uh, really so beautiful and so energetic city. Uh, every day you can see something new and I really like that Moscow when I sleep. Uh, secondly, uh, why I don't like Moscow? Because uh, uh, the city take more energy and sometimes you need just uh, rest and it's important. And my role today. Uh, good evening again, my name is Alina and uh, today uh, my role is playing uh, an accountant. This means that I am uh, uh, responsible for counting all uh, words like uh, such as uh, no, mostly, like and other words uh, that um, uh, don't uh, contribute uh, to the meaning uh, uh, for the speakers. And also I will uh, note all unnecessary sounds uh, such as a, mm, mm, and other. I understand that in uh, your presentation uh, sometimes you need to uh, use pause and you can to do that. But please without other sounds. It's more better. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, dear role figures. And finally, finally, Evgeny Larin is here and he's ready to set the note for the meeting. So meet Evgeny Larin. Thank you, sir. Okay. So today I was asked to prepare a sort of the day for you. Yeah, and um, actually my sort of the day is connected with Moscow. Uh, here previously we discussed uh, what we like or don't like about Moscow, but my thought actually is that Moscow is really great, stunning and fascinating city. And you know why? Because I've been a lot of places actually. I climbed mountains in Nepal, I was in Barcelona, drinking beer in Munich and Prague, also traveled to California and uh, climbed these mountains and running and doing lots of other stuff. But all this time, when I spent a week or even a month somewhere outside in some foreign country, actually I really missed Moscow. And all the time I understood that this place really needs me to be there because uh, in no any other place uh, actually the modern buildings combined with uh, 
ancient buildings and history uh, combined with such a dynamic way of life. So, Moscow is really the best place to live, the best place uh, to do business and uh, the best uh, place just to enjoy life. So it's my thought today. Love Moscow and try uh, try to do uh, try to take everything what it gives you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Evgeny. So, uh, and uh, you might be curious what what I personally think about Moscow. So, uh, I was born here. I'm a native Muscovite, as in uh, as in a way. And uh, I, like Moscow is my so like city of my heart. When I go to other cities and I, I, I become uh, homesick after maybe two or three days, and when I come here, I walk in the streets, breathe the polluted air, and uh, look into people's eyes, and I feel at home. And why I don't like Moscow? Um, I have another favorite city of mine. It, it is Ufa, surprisingly, the city of Ufa in the center, in, in the central, in central Russia. And uh, unfortunately, Moscow doesn't have. Uh, that very own historical reenactment, reenactment club wh where my friends are, which we, which Kufa has. So unfortunately, this is one disadvantage. That's it. <laughs> okay, so we gradually proceeding to the speaking part of the session, and let's enjoy the great speakers and their speeches. And the first speaker who I'd like to introduce here on stage is Ivan Shilayev with the. Uh, with his speech, a genuine teacher. <coughs> teacher, yes. And he is doing his project on pathways. He got on the second level, can you imagine? The second level on pathways. Congratulations with that. Mm -hmm. And his project is devoted to introduction to mentoring. So, Ivan Shalayev, a genuine teacher. Ivan, welcome. Finally. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear Toastmasters, welcome, welcome here. Uh, you know, despite the diversity and the origins of all the world's languages, there are some words that persist basically in every language. And one of these uh, words is the teacher. A guru, mentor, coach, trainer, all these notions uh, describe a person who, who passed the way, who finished the road, who possessed the knowledge and the skills, and thus can show the way to others. He is the one who made his mistakes and right now can teach lessons to others. Uh, nowadays, because, uh, because it's quite easy to share an idea with masses of people by using either YouTube or social media or any other uh, informational channels, more and more people pop up and uh, call themselves guru and teachers. And uh, actually there is nothing special about that. Uh, during the entire human history, uh, in pursuit of fame, money, self-affirmation, uh, self and uh, other things, uh, fake teachers rise. And the only uh, point today that is different is that there is a lot of them, and it's pretty tricky to understand which one is true and who is who in general. Uh, for me personally, the main point uh, is that, that I pay attention to is whether a person practice what he's teaching or not. And the funny story, um, when I was studying at university, we had a curse, uh, some uh, le lessons. And uh, it was designed to teach us exercises for improvement of our eyesight in order to avoid wearing glasses. And the remarkable thing here was the guy that was teaching us. And I'm referring actually to his big, tight glasses of his uh, lenses of his glasses that he was putting on while reading the manual. And of course we were not serious about that, we did not believe him. So the number one thing that I believe uh, distinguish a genuine teacher is that he should be what he teach you. Second thing, there's a short story. Uh, there was a Romanian sculptor called uh, Constantin Brincuș. And he was a student uh, of the magnificent French uh, master Auguste Rodin. Uh, and after years of studying and learning, he decided to leave his teacher. And he explained that by saying that under a big tree grows nothing. And he meant that a great teacher can be like a shadow that uh, don't allow the student to grow, to become a master, and to realize his potential. So 
at the end of the day, afterwards, uh, Brinkush uh, finds his own way. He became a remarkable uh, artist. And in the same very way, I think that every student should betray <coughs> his teacher and betray the teacher that planted that seed inside of him and go grow his own tree his own way, in, 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 his, in his own way. So the lesson here is that uh, a good teacher prepared his student to leave him. And probably uh, many of you have, have kids. <laughs> and uh, you should probably observe that in order to, for a child to learn how to walk, thousands of mistakes and failures should be committed. And uh, you as a parent, uh, after a, 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 a thousand, uh, hundred trials of your kid, you don't say something like, you know, buddy, you just can't do that. It doesn't work, so just give up. Just, that's, but that's fine, so please stop it. And you don't do that because uh, many years ago you have completed that journey. And you do know that the only, re uh, that the only way to learn is to make mistakes. So what I want to say is that uh, a true teacher allows you to make mistakes as much as, ne as it needed. The more, the better. He will just guide you and uh, help you to avoid the unnecessary ones. The, the next thing that I want to point is, uh, again, uh, a short story. <laughs> um, basically, uh, uh, Yeah, this is the moment that I was uh, always afraid of. So just, this is this is the this is horrible. Okay, uh, a teacher, great teacher. Uh, um. Yeah, thank you. I, I, should, I should go go sit there. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just flowing in my mind, and I will catch it, and uh, I will be late. I'm sorry, Mr. Timer, for that. Uh, yeah. Um, man, God of memory, please help me. <laughs> Move to the next point. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, it was a story, oh, I got it, I got it, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, it, was, it was again a story, um, uh, so it is said that one of the greatest masters of the Renaissance era period, Michelangelo Bonarroti, now you, you, now you see why, why I forgot this point. Um, he was a remarkable artist and on his deathbed, this 86, world, uh, 86 years old man, he said, 